Good morning. <laughs> Good early morning. Maybe. Maybe, maybe for you. Maybe it's morning. But it's, as we said last time, definitely morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's almost always definitely morning when we're going here. <laughs> this, mm. this is what happens when you're a family man, right? You gotta you gotta podcast at five a.m. Yeah, you don't you don't you don't squeeze in a brother's K podcast, you know, wherever you Just want. Yeah, I'm, I'm right after lunch, I think this would be a great time. <laughs> Uh, for all you students out there, you don't understand what we're talking about, but someday, someday, <laughs> someday. unless you join uh, Father Zosimus uh, Monastery, then then you'll have different a different situation going. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe something so. similar, actually, to tell you the truth. Okay, so we start book five here, pro and contra. Um, and but we're not going to get into the Grand Inquisitor because that that deserves. As you put it, that deserves a podcast of its own. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna double up this week, um, squeezing it. Actually, another squeeze in between two vacations. You, Doctor Jager, yeah. were just in uh, Lake of the Ozarks. So I'll be going down to Clear Creek Abbey, and uh, we have three days here to podcast twice. So here's day one. See, my vacation was more of the, um, you know, like the, the Theodore Dimitri sort of vacation. <laughs> Yours is more of the Alyosha yeah. vacation. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there will be Theodore stuff in there too. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's more like the guy from the north. This is the, I, I'm the I'm the monk from the north going down to the monastery. That's right. It's yeah. uh, he never gets a name. At least he hasn't yet. Maybe he gets one later. You but... better start thinking about uh, how you keep the fast. <laughs> you better write it down because that guy just rattled it off he like. Knew it. He oh knew yeah, how he kept the fast. Oh yeah. Heart. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna deal with Alyosha talking to Lisa Smerdyakov with a guitar, and and then the brothers meeting in the in the tavern slash restaurant, right? Right. <coughs> well, let's start in the engagement here. So, um, he's being obedient to his promises, which I didn't think he was going to be. Right? He went to if was it. Was, I, now I'm trying to remember. Oh no, he he started being obedient last time, right? Mm-hmm. This is just day two in this book, right? Yeah. I mean, this is not taking place in a long period of time yeah, so far I'm, at all. I think it's who someone left a comment on one of the the YouTube um, upload videos that said uh, it's important to keep in mind that this is really the events over two days. Yeah. And so it's easy to. Think that a conversation on page one hundred is not connected to a conversation on page four hundred, but really that's just yeah. thirty-two hours right. away from each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we're we're just in day two of this of this mass right now, and um, so this is the day that he thinks his elders dying, right? And well, at least he thought he was, um. And he got sent away, basically. But he made promises that he was going to go see people. So Alyosha is on his way to go see people. And he goes to um, Madame Holokov's, right? Mm-hmm. Katerina Ivanovna is in her hysterics, or ending her hysterics, I think. Um, and uh, he gets sent to go talk to Lisa, or however you pronounce her name. Wait, no. Where's John when we need him? <laughs> um and so they're kind of talking about how he's going to, like, she basically admits, okay, I wasn't joking. I was serious, right, when I asked you yeah. to marry me. And he was like, I always thought you were serious. And, and they have this funny conversation where she thinks that he's a little, uh, in a funny way, like, uh, presumptuous that, of course, you were serious. You were talking about being in love with me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> But she thinks that that's pretty funny. But but he starts talking about some. I mean, he kind of starts talking about. He says something interesting on page two forty one. Let's put it that way. Okay, so here he is. He does two things, two odd things in his monk's cassock. Number one, he kisses her twice. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Which which she finds to be weird. Um, the and first time, the second time. The second time she kind of asks it. Yeah. Uh, but you know you. For those who know the Eastern churches, you might be like, "Well, what's the problem with that?" Well, well, when you're a monk, you still take vows of, you know, 
of celibacy. So, so there's, you know, it's not just that he's becoming a, a Russian priest, which wouldn't be that much of a problem. And in fact, you would assume that my Russian seminarian would be chasing girls because yeah. <laughs> he's about to get ordained yeah. and then, then, then all bets are off. Um, but, but he also says this interesting comment um, about, well, he sa- he, he, he's, talk- he's telling the story about Elusha, Ilu- right, and his father and trying to give him the money. And, and she's very interested in this because Katerina Ivanovna's there and she's been, Lisa's been sort of listening to all of this. Um, and he sort of continues this theme we've been talking about, right? that, yes. that we're all the same. Um, and there's this sort of question that she asks, a question that he thinks is a really important question, mainly because she asks the question. He thinks it says something about Lisa. Uh, this is page 241. She's, she, she's a little worried as they're talking about, you know, he gets really excited, right? He says, he's going to take the money tomorrow. He's going to take it tomorrow. Here's, here's why. And he kind of psychoanalyzes him, which yep. Dostoevsky is, even, even by uh, Nietzsche's standards, was very good at doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says, um, isn't there an our analysis? I mean, your analysis, no better call it ours. Aren't we showing contempt for him? For that poor man and analyzing his soul like this, as it were, from above in deciding so certainly that he will take the money. So, so she kind of thinks that they're condescending this man. They're, 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 treating, him, they're treating him like he's lesser, lesser, and they can look at him from above and sort of say what he's going to do. Yeah. And uh, Alyosha says, no, absolutely wrong. You don't understand why I know this. I know this guy, not because I'm looking from above and saying um, this, this is how sort of a loser like this would act, although he's kind of saying that. Um, Alyosha's response is, I was thinking of that on the way here. How can it be contempt when we are all like him, when we are all just the same as he is? For you know we're just the same, no better. If we we are better, we should have been just the same in his place. I don't know about you, Lisa, but I consider that I have a sordid soul in many ways, and his soul is not sordid. On the contrary, full of fine feeling. No, Lisa, I have no contempt for him. Um... My elder told me once to care for, care for most people exactly as I would for children and for some of them as I would for the sick in hospitals. So it's interesting that he compares this guy to a sick person and says, but, but before that he says, I'm just like that, right? right. And it kind of goes back to this theme we've been talking about, right? The Karamazovs, the Brothers of the Black Stain, um, that everyone is sick. And in some sense, the way Alios is talking about this guy is he's actually not... Like, if I was in his place, I think I'd be worse off. I don't think I would be as fine-feeling as him, right? Because right. the, the whole story that the, that the captain... Captain? Is he a captain? I think so. Yeah. Snerjanov Sner, or something like that. The whole story that he tells of his son and sort of taking care of his son and loving his son. I, I think Alyosha thinks if I was in his position, I would not be that good. Right. Um, so, I, so there's something interesting about this sort of this, this continual theme of we're all united in our sinfulness. Where, where in here, in this uh, somewhere, I, I'm looking for it now. I can't find it. He, he mentions, um, you only you would ask that question because you've you've suffered so much and you've gone through. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, two forty three, near the top. So was this before uh, you you just read from? Yeah, I just read on two forty one. Uh-huh. So it's two pages later. When he says, uh, she's laughing at him. I'm glad you laugh. You laugh like a child, but you think like a martyr. And she's like, how like a martyr? Your question just now, whether we, were sh- we weren't showing contempt for the poor man by dissecting his soul, that was the question of a sufferer. Right. You see, I don't know how to express it, but anyone who thinks of such questions is capable of suffering. Right. And we already know she is, right? I mean, she's in a wheelchair. Yep. She's obviously uh, has some issue, um, even though they think that she's being healed either by Zosima or not by Zosima. And Zosima doesn't know if it's by him either. Yeah. Um, but there's something about being capable of suffering that makes one wise or, or even more holy. Because yeah. he uses the term martyr. Right? Yeah, I think you have, I, I think maybe what's, what's being suggested is you have some insight into. Um, reality by your suffering 
Yeah. Right. So something something is revealed to you in virtue of your suffering that you maybe, or maybe it's it's revealed to all, but it's only in virtue of suffering that you can see it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, but it's interesting that he has her also where you just read. She she kind of toys with the idea no this is your analysis no this is our analysis mm-hmm. and she she is kind of wrestling with are you the one that's doing this or is it us and she's at least very attentive to that question mm-hmm. which seems to be as we'll see over the next you know several pages uh, a really important question on the table who's doing an action is it me or is it us uh-huh. Right. Who's responsible for this particular event? Is it me or is it us? Um, and it's very rare that you have someone who's willing to make that type of um, um, like admission, ad- admission, or or even just uh, you know be ha- have that sort of examination of of conscience that mm-hmm. leads one to even suggest. No, maybe I too am responsible for this uh, and it, it's it was neat to see her wrestle back and forth and then she very clearly decides oh no it better it better be us this is our doing and maybe that's also something that comes from her suffering yeah. but it, you know it's and this is i think dust asking a big question is seems to be in many ways just what does it mean to be what is what does it mean to be christian and what does christianity mean for reality and, it, and if, if it's true, here I'm going to get theological. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if, it's, if it's true that Jesus Christ is the revelation of God, who is being itself, and if it's true that the ultimate revelation of God happens on the cross, which, you know, I, I think we, we have to say as Christians. I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's a Western thing to say that the crucifixion is, is, is revelatory. I think it's, it's a Christian thing. Right. Um, then it would seem that anyone who enters into this is really entering into being. Mm-hmm. Um, entering into suffering is entering into being. And then you, then, then you start, I was thinking about this actually recently, I, you start asking questions of, must being suffer? I mean, is it just the nature of being to suffer? And, and what is suffering? And is there something in God that is a suffering? Or to use a Balthazarian term, a supra-suffering. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, if that's what, if that's a revelation of being, it's not just a, it seems like it's not just a, a mechanism or a sort of a, a detached image of what God is. I'm going to show you what God is by this detached image. Especially if we talk about the incarnation, being the incarnation, really being God. And it seems to me that the suffering on the cross is not a detached image of here, this will help you understand what God is as an analogy. Right. But instead, I'm revealing to you myself. Yeah. Full stop. And, and that means that you can only properly, adequ- adequately understand suffering by... And that, that well, you can only understand reality through right. suffering. But that means... You will only understand suffering through um, participating in it, through mm-hmm. through undergoing it yourself, and so to think that you can understand suffering by sitting in your you know cozy your little pre-planned safety bubble, Fair, Feral Academic Center office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think, you know, I know all about suffering. I was I was I was thinking I was I didn't want to jump ahead, but we can jump ahead. No, I by, was already jumping by, ahead in my mind. Right yeah, by, by thinking like, oh, I understand suffering because I read all these newspaper articles and I've seen all of the things, the horrible things that the Turks have done. But no, not the Turks, the Russians with their, with their you know, um, uh, switches and their, yeah. their little, you know, yeah. whip, whips. And we prefer rods and, r- um, uh, yeah. Rods and sta- staves, or something like that. It sounded like yeah. a Psalm twenty-three. Yeah, no, I think it was deliberate. I think it was deliberate. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I, I, th- throughout the whole thing, it, I mean, because Ivan, that we're jumping ahead to chapter four, I think. Yeah, that's fine. I, hey, this R- is R- part R- of our video. podcast too, so we can do that. Yeah, but but he, he rods he, and scourges. He he, he, he translates. He keeps it. going back and forth. He says, you know, you, you have 
something you have you, they have the rods with them always and they'll they won't be taken from them or i forget i mean he he seems to be deliberately or may, I don't, playing off of psalm 23 yeah, yeah yeah at the very at the very and least it's right. interesting though you're riding your staff and they bring me they bring you bring me comfort we talked about this already in this podcast or no no, this was uh, Gregory of Nyssa, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. When, Song of Songs. when, when the, when the, when the bride gets beaten by the, uh, yep, by the guard, the night guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and 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 this idea of bringing you comfort, right? What does that mean? That the rod and the staff bring you comfort. Normally, we think like, oh yeah, Jesus is going to protect us from the wolves on the on on you know in the dark valley, yeah. and. <laughs> Gregory of Nyssa at least thinks, no, it means Jesus can beat you. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. going to be good for you because you'll know reality. Yeah. And I don't know that Dostoevsky doesn't think the same. No, and, and because, yeah, so it's, it's kind of slowly starting to come together because, so I even think that I can make a claim on God and what God has done and is doing because I have seen reality for what it is and what it is is horrible, bad, yeah. evil. Right. And that's because he sees the and here's, suffering. Here's my catalog. But, but he doesn't really see the suffering. Like, like the, the, I think the problem of, of of Ivan is that he is looking at the suffering from the outside. Yeah. And um, whereas, and he says, I don't want anything to do with that. The 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 whole plan, the suffering part, especially. But even the redemption part, I don't want anything to do with any of this. Because it's not enough. It's not good enough. Yeah. Whereas, whereas Alyosha, uh, I'm not going to be able to find this on the fly. Alyosha, at one point, uh, Ivan sees that he's he's pained by this. Like this is this is visibly yeah. hurting Alyosha, and and Ivan's sort of after he checks himself and realizes he's kind of being taken away, going over the top. Um, says, "Oh, I'll stop. I see that I'm see that I'm I'm, you know, ailing you." And he says, "No, I want to. I want to suffer. Yeah, I, I want. Don't stop. I that's, want." That's that's page two sixty nine. Um, yeah, if you want to. Yeah, oh, he's, oh, yeah, it's right there at the, towards the top. Yeah. This is his sort of explanation of what I call the privy girl, the girl who's in the in the outhouse. And, yeah, I mean these stories were terrible, right? And but I what I I really like this this rebellion chapter because I think there's just no way that you can turn away from this reality that I, I, Ivan is in some sense although although we're, we're kind of saying no he's not wise because he doesn't he doesn't in a sense experience the suffering but in some sense this is a question I mean this is like the problem of evil brought to its ultimate yeah like like hardest hardest way you can ask this question right here and he says I'm gonna ignore everything except children I just want to talk about children because he knows that that's going to like bring it into the ultimate relief. And it's, it's in the midst of this, that, that he's telling the story of this girl who, you know, her parents beat her. They, 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 they fill her mouth with excrement and throw her in the privy because she didn't say I need to go up to bed now, but fell asleep on the couch or something yeah, yeah. like uh, uh, horrible, horrible things. And, and you, you know, here's what, here's what I don't think. There's no way that happened because I know stuff like that, right. Right? Yeah. And, and and that's what Ivan's trying to get at, right? Um, and he asked this question. He asked these questions at the end of that story, right? Um, he says, talks about her meek, unresentful tears to dear kind God to protect her, and he keeps bringing that line up that he uses there. Do you understand that, friend and brother, you pious and humble novice? Do you understand why this infamy must be and is permitted? Without it, I am told, man could not have existed on earth, for he could not have known good and evil. Why should he know that diabolical good and evil when it costs so much? I thought that was a really good line there. Why the whole world of knowledge is not worth what that child's prayer to dear kind God? To, I say nothing of the suffering of grown-up people. They have eaten the apple, damn them, and the devil take them all. <laughs> but these little ones, I am making you suffer, Alyosha. You are not yourself. I'll leave off if you like. Never mind. I want to suffer too, uh -huh. and the two there it seems to be referring to all these children. Yeah. Right? Um, and so there's something about, and, and and this is a huge theme in Dostoevsky in general, but I think maybe in this book even more, unity, solidarity, and suffering. I want to suffer too. I want to suffer with them, and it seems to be like the suffering with them that I don't want to say justifies. Yeah. 
I don't want to say, and maybe justification is just not the right word, and maybe that's not what we're really looking yeah. for. That's what Ivan's yeah. looking for. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so I think it ties up with, um, with, with the theme that we already, we already saw a little bit last chapter, and, and we talked about it, I believe, in the last podcast, mm-hmm. and, and it's going to come up in the, maybe the next one, uh, but definitely when we get to the chapter on Zosima. But if it, if it really is true that we are responsible for all, to all, right. then uh, what that means, I, I think, is um, our suffering has the, the, the seeds of, of a type of atonement for, for all. Right. Right? So, so you see the sufferings of, of others. And if you yourself do recognize that you are um, responsible for that, then by your undergoing that that suffering yourself, you 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 sort of bring it to um, I don't know redemption in some in some mysterious sense. I mean, so, I mean, yeah. it, it's it's not it's it's to kind of say um, I am the one who here's here's the reason why this is happening and it's me and and i am going to to make up for to it up or for, to or, i mean maybe that's I mean, not they, a good way of putting i mean it. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna bear it right yeah. i'm yeah. going to and and i think um this seems to be only it seems to only makes sense if there's some sort of metaphysical grounding um for sort of a a, a, a solidarity among all men Right, and and and, then, al- and ultimately a solidarity in the sin, right? Then and this yeah. goes back to this idea that we're all Karamazovs. Right? Yeah, and and then and then the way that it gets redeemed is that if if there is one Lord Jesus Christ who we you know share in through through baptism, mm-hmm. then it means that the 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 redemption that Christ earned on our behalf through His suffering. And his taking on all the suffering of, of, of the world, then it, it's something that we ourselves, in virtue of being Christians, in virtue of being baptized, we have to take on ourselves, or otherwise we have no share in his name because we're mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. we're not um, living the life that he lived. Yeah, St. Paul says we'll live with him only if we die with him. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, of course, that's what Alyosha, right before the Grand Inquisitor, brings up. He says, uh, I mean, Alyosha is... He's he's a great character. I love Alyosha so far. I mean, um, and 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 I keep going back to Dostoevsky's own preface where he says maybe you won't understand why this guy's the hero, because what does he do? I mean, let's go back to the engagement chapter super quick here. Um, he he says uh, he's talking to Lisa, and Lisa says I don't like your brother Ivan Alyosha, <laughs> um, and he says he heard this, but he didn't say anything about it. And this is, this is Alyosha's response, though. My brothers are destroying themselves. Page 245. My father, too. They're destroying others with them. It's the primitive fourth force of the Karamazovs, as Father Paisi said the other day, a crude, unbridled, earthly force. Does the Spirit of God move about that force? Even that I don't know. I only know that I, too, am a Karamazov. Me, a monk. A monk! Am I a monk, Lisa? You said just now that I was. Yes, I did, she says. And he answers this. And perhaps I don't even believe in God. Yeah. And you, you hear that. And, and, you, and, and this is the hero of the book. He says maybe he doesn't even believe in God. And, and when he says that, like, you really think that he's really asking that. He's really kind of throwing that out there in sincerity. Right? And it kind of goes back to that, what we've talked about before. What does it mean to believe in God? Mm-hmm. Right? It's not just saying true on a, on a true false yeah. do you believe in God, God exists right? yeah. yeah and and so but I think he's being honest about um, sort of the, the 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 impossibility of the modern to to be untouched by atheism which is a, of course the obsession of Dostoevsky but I think his saying that is really important and and his it, yeah, I, go ahead I, I love the way so the, the narrator uh, puts it in the next the, the next paragraph right after and perhaps I, I don't believe in God then Lee says you don't believe what's the matter 
And and then you have the narrator sort of commenting on this. But Alyosha did not answer. There was something too mysterious, too subjective mm-hmm. in these last words of his, perhaps obscure to himself, but yet torturing him. Mm-hmm. Right. I I love. Um, <coughs> I love that he is, um, um, he's not speaking from an idea of what I should be saying as a monk, right? Here's, right. here's what monks should say, therefore I'm going to say this. Right, because right. because then you wouldn't be a true monk, going right. back to Zosima's own right. explanation. exactly. So, so, so here, you, I, I think this is, this is sort of the, a necessary precondition of actually believing in what you believe in, mm-hmm. right? I think this is this is a type of um, of of a type of freedom that that you have here, uh, which is pretty remarkable. That he's not afraid even to to admit this. And and I like I also uh, you know this section here, too mysterious, too subjective, perhaps obscure to himself, but torturing him. So it doesn't say. Oh, that's meaningless. That that thing deep in my heart. Yeah. Um, but it's mysterious, and I don't even understand it. Mm-hmm. But maybe I don't believe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and I think it it gets less obscure in his conversation with Ivan, because throughout this conversation in in the rebellion chapter, um, he'll say things like, you know, the the great. The great, uh, the final sort of the crescendo of the of the rebellion chapter mm-hmm. is as he talks about these children suffering and all the terrible things um, that happens, uh, and and if if there is some ultimate harmony at the end, he said, if I'm not there, it's unfair. I want to be there when everyone suddenly understands what it has all been for. Says Ivan in two seventy one. Um, he asks this question about. And he actually says what I, what we were just talking about. Interesting. Uh, 271 uh, in the middle of the page. It's beyond all comprehension why they should suffer, the children, right? And why they should pay for the harmony. Why should they too furnish material to enrich the soil for the harmony of the future? Which, even that language, harmony of the future, it sounds like this is socialism. This is Marxism. I, I was just going to say this is, and I believe this was a, a, a critique that um, a lot of early, I mean, it it's continues, but it was very early on um, um, that the the future state is sort of built out of the, the 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 blood and the sweat and the sacrifice of the earlier yeah conditions right so that you have you go through all this so that you get this future state right of redemption of man right and you know single brotherhood and what have you and, and it turns out that there is no share. I have no. I as an early member of the right. the peoples of the history of, of of the perfection of man. Yeah, that I have no share in that. Right. Right. So in a sense, it's it seems to be for for naught because right. you know it, it. I'm I'm striving for something that I have no. It's not my end. It's right. not. Why should I sacrifice for this future reality that is not going to be right. Um, that, that that I won't even participate in. Yeah, yeah, and and it's funny your whole explanation right there. I've, I've been wondering: Are you talking about Marxism or Christianity? Which one? Yeah, and, and that's <laughs> kind of the question that that's being asked: is is Christianity just Marxism with an with with sort of an, an another world yeah. rather than this yeah. world? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Dostoevsky is. Wrestling with the fact that you have to reject that if you're really going to understand what Christianity is about. I think that's why Nietzsche really uh, liked a lot, of, at least a lot of Dostoevsky things, because he was. I think it's pretty clear when you read Dostoevsky's works, especially this one, that he's trying to break down the the, the separation of the kingdom of of heaven and the kingdom of earth. Of earth, yeah. He, right. We we tend to want there to be this radical sh- separation. Yeah. And um, going back to that conversation with the monks and Ivan about his article, uh-huh. he was trying to show, um, or what was one of the things being suggested was, what's the relation between the church and and the the, the earthly kingdom? Mm-hmm. And um, it looks like 
the unification of the two is the goal, but how do you get the unification of the two? Maybe it's to destroy the kingdom of earth and set it up in heaven. So mm-hmm. there's a unification that like, you know, this is all meaningless. Let's just, there's, there's really nothing here. There's no kingdom of earth really at all. Mm-hmm. Just this one. Or maybe it's the other way around. There's no kingdom of, of heaven. It's just the kingdom of earth. And it's just the, 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 the church understood at the, as like the, the earthly reality. So I, I think... What Which you, is kind of the Marxist way. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think what you, what you get teased out... One of the things, I don't want to say this is like the main point of the book, but one of the things teased out is this question of, of um, a dualism between heaven and earth and how should you understand the relationship between the two. And at the very least, Dostoevsky seeming, is seeming to say... There is no dualism. Yeah. Why, why, why is it an either or? Right. That's the question right. I think that that's being asked. And only if you do go the either or route, do you get into problems like Ivan is in, yeah. I think. Yeah. And if you read Nietzsche's Twilight of the Idols, you see he, he's making that same hmm. push. He's trying, mm-hmm. to, trying to get rid of that, that same dualism. Now, he kind of moves in a slightly different direction, but he's worried about that exact same issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think, so let me, let me keep reading here a little bit. Um, as he's sort of coming to his crescendo, um, he says, "He says, why should they pay for the harmony? Why should they to furnish material to enrich the soil of the harmony of the future? I understand solidarity in sin among men. That's the, that's the big thing, the thing we've been talking about. I understand solidarity in retribution too, but there can be no such solidarity with children. If it's really true, they must share responsibility for all their father's crimes. Such a truth is not of this world and is beyond my comprehensions. Some jester will say, perhaps, that the child would have grown up and have sinned. But you see, he didn't grow up. That is a killer line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was torn to pieces by the dogs at eight years old. Oh, Alyosha, I am not blaspheming. I understand, of course, what an upheaval of the universe it would be when everything in heaven and earth blends in one hymn of praise and everything that lives and has lived cries aloud, Thou art just, O Lord, for thy ways are revealed. When the mother embraces the fiend who threw her child to the dogs, and all three cry aloud with tears, Thou art just, O Lord. Then, of course, the crown of knowledge will be reached, and all will be made clear. But what pulls me here is that I cannot accept that harmony. Right? And that's the big thing, right? It's, he says, And while I'm on earth, I make haste to take my own measures. You see, Alyosha, perhaps it really may happen that if I live to that moment and rise again to see it, I too perhaps may cry aloud with the rest, looking at the mother embracing the child's torturer. Thou art just, O Lord. But I don't want to cry aloud then. It's not worth it, he says. It's not worth right. it. Yeah. Which I think is... Um, he, and, and, and he ends this by saying... Uh, I mean, let me keep reading. Yeah, this, is, yeah, that, this, is... this, this next page, by the way, is, is, the, is, is the best one in the whole chapter, I think. Mm-hmm. 272. And I think this chapter is maybe the best one in the whole book. Um, but... So far. Let's put it this way. This is the chapter I remembered from reading it, you know, 15 yeah, years ago. It's hard to forget this one. Yeah. So he says, it's not worth it because those tears are unatoned for. They must be atoned for or, or there can be no harmony, right? What good, skipping a little bit, what good can hell do since those children have already been tortured? And what becomes of harmony if there is hell? This right. is like the question of sort of mm-hmm. universalism, right? I protest that the truth is not worth such a price. The sufferings, this is this, and this is, I think, the the killer line that he has, and 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 the best argument that he has. Let her forgive. He says about the the mother embracing the the oppressor. I don't want the mother to embrace the oppressor who threw her son to the dogs. Mm-hmm. She dare not forgive him. Let her forgive him for herself, if she will. Let her forgive the torturer for the immeasurable suffering of her mother's heart. But the sufferings of her tortured child, she has no right to forgive. She dare not forgive the torturer, even if the child were to forgive him. And if that is so, if they dare not forgive, what becomes of harmony? I don't want harmony. (laughs) From love for humanity, I don't want it. I would rather be left with unavenged suffering. I would rather remain with my unavenged suffering and unsatisfied indignation, even if I were wrong. He says, I hasten to give back my entrance t- ticket to this world. That's, that's, that's yeah. a great line. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and Alyosha says, that's rebellion. But the whole time before this, if, if you remember, as he's telling about all these horrible things that happened, and whenever Al- Alyosha, who's listening very attentively, right, um, whenever Alyosha 
comes in and he says things like, like, for example, at the bottom of this page, right? He says, um, uh, let's see. Imagine that you're creating a fabric of human destiny with the object of making men happy in the end, giving them peace and rest at last, but that it was essential, inevitable to torture to death only one tiny creature, that baby beating its breast, breast with its fist, for instance, and to found that edifice on its unavenged tears. Would you consent to be the architect of those conditions? Tell me, tell me the truth. No, I wouldn't consent, Ayosha says. But this is not the first time that he's agreed with right. Ivan in the midst of all this. Over and over he agrees with him. And I think, to me, as, as, as we brought up this, you brought up that narrator saying the mysterious, obscure, yeah. subjective reality, obscure even to himself, mm -hmm. that was torturing him. I feel like it's becoming less obscure as Ivan talks. And he's like, yeah, yeah, because I wouldn't accept this. Mm -hmm. And so Ivan is, the, the, the thing about Ivan or not Ivan, I'm sorry, the thing about Ayosha that is so um, impressive and why I think he is heroic is because he does what Zosima tells everybody to do. He does not lie to himself. And he's true to himself. Yeah. And so when Ivan brings this up, him sitting there in his monk's cassock doesn't say, well, here's the answer to the God thing. Right? And here's his brother. Yeah. I, I, and and this, is, this makes me really think of all my like, evangelization students. Right? Here's his brother, who, who, who's the atheist. Who's the one who rejects God, right? Whatever that means, and and whatever whatever it means that he's an atheist, like I, he doesn't even say he doesn't believe in God. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, he says specifically, right? Yeah. But yeah. but here he is, and here's Alyosha sitting in his monk's cassock, talking to the, his brother, the one he loves, his his full brother, not even his half brother, his full brother, right? Mm -hmm. His his one brother who's a full brother, and he's talking to him about all this stuff, and he's bringing out these difficult arguments of of evil, mm -hmm. and Alyosha doesn't go into apologetics mode and start explaining why that's true. He it, he just will say things like. Yeah, I think it's horrible, and I hate that too. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't say, here's the explanation. He just lets him keep going. Right. And, and I think that that's, that's honesty. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that honesty above apologetics is more revelatory of the truth of Christianity than apologetics is. Right. But I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sort it, of getting into missiology here. But, I mean, the, so so two, 270, I mean, this, so this was... This struck me interesting. The the, the little um, modifiers. I don't know if you want to call them. Uh, you get to call them modifiers. The way that Alyosha responds that the narrator puts in is always interesting. Like Alyosha said, blah 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 blah, in some sort of like you know adjectival way or something, mm -hmm. or I guess adverbial way. Uh -huh. um, middle of two seventy. Why are you trying me? Alyosha cried with sudden distress. Will you say what you mean at last? So Alyosha seems to be distressed with the fact that Ivan is trying him. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so this is this is there. There seems to be something deliberate that um, Ivan's trying to do. He's trying to sort of a, put Alyosha to the test, and also right. many 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 times in here. Um, uh, the narrator, or even I think I can't, Ali Asher, can't remember, um, makes the comment that that Ivan sort of not himself, um, and and or maybe this was in the Grand Inquisitor. I can't remember, but you get the impression that maybe it's someone else who who's well, speaking here at the at the chat um, at the end of the brothers make friends. He says this very intriguing line. This is a great chapter too. But yeah. uh, he says, uh, "Dear little brother, I don't want to corrupt you." Or to turn you from your stronghold, perhaps I want to be healed by you, which is which is a, an interesting way of, that he puts it. Right. And then he says, Ivan smiled suddenly, quite like a little gentle child. Alyosha had never seen such a smile on his face before. Which, I, I don't I don't know what that means there, but I but I think is really insignificant. Right. And I think the fact that he wants to be healed by him, and it makes me think of the conversation he had with the the monks, when when he got very excited that Zosim was talking to him about. Oh, what was it? Were, were they talking about his article? Mm -hmm. But he showed this like excitement that like Alyosha was like, "This is weird, like yeah. that he's so excited about this." Yeah. There's something and, that's crying out in him. And when 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 Zosima responds back to him, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I forget that was. Um, yeah, I kind of want to go to that chapter now. So he he responds, and 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 Ivan's kind of taken back and very receptive of it he, so much so that he gets up and walks over and he um, um, bows 
and maybe kisses is what some of those yeah 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 yeah. Um, but i remember uh yeah i remember finding that that interesting but but i i i don't know i i get the impression that ivan is is um kind of putting Alyosha to the test on purpose. And and maybe some of it is to to, to suggest that um, you're the only one that I know who has any sort of insight into the meaning of life. Because early on he says, there, there's no meaning of life. You just get to 30 and then you dash the cup. <laughs> yeah, and, um, right. Unless you're a loser like Fyodor, and then you push it to 70 and 80, which is despicable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so so I, I, I kind of wonder if Alyosha is the hero of this novel, because at the, at the, the, the obedience to his elder, right? So it's not, what's interesting is he's not going and making all these visits and finishing, you know, all of this, these conversations out of say just the pure goodness of his own heart and right. love for them he right. actually is doing this because he loves his elder uh-huh. and this gives rise to a love for his brothers and his father and what have you but uh-huh. initially it's out of disobedience and and it's it's this moving into the life of of, of Ivan that gives um, Ivan this insight into a completely different way of living and it, it kind of tortures him throughout. Well, as we'll see, it's, it, it, it may be one of the reasons why he is um, both loves Alyosha, wants Alyosha to save him, but at the same time, he's also trying to corrupt him because it seems to be contrary to the only thing that he, say, knows, which is there is no... There is no, um, there is no morality. There is no, mm-hmm. there's no point of that. So mm-hmm. why are you doing this? But at the same time, Alyosha um, is someone that he knows, and therefore it kind of Alyosha makes sense to him. Christianity doesn't make sense to him, right? And so it's this, right? Kind of, who do I go? Who do I? Who do I believe? Do I believe Alyosha or do I believe Christianity? Right. And and, and, and there's a question of. Is, I mean, is Christianity sort of a system that, that's, that's believable, or is it only incarnational, where Alyosha is Christianity, right. and, rather, than it, rather than Christianity being an explanation of the problem of evil? Right, because, I mean, you could, somebody could say, oh, no, Alyosha, you just deviated from Christianity because you said, perhaps I don't believe in God. So, yeah. like, you're, you've actually, like, gone away from the heart of Christianity by, yeah. by that. Yeah. But maybe um, what's being suggested is that's not to move away from the heart of Christianity, but it's to be true to yourself, not in this sort of hippie way, but it's to be true to yourself. Right. And this full ad- ad- admission of what it would take to truly believe in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And, and therefore, it's sort of a confession and therefore moving towards the heart of Christianity. Which is, which is again, goes back to the solidarity with all sinners, right? Why, why, why can I be united with the, the, the drunk captain who's like ruining his family's life? Yeah. It's because I'm no better than him. And in fact, he is better than me, right? Because I know in my heart of hearts that perhaps I don't believe in God. And, yeah. and, and, and sort of this, but that's like, it sounds so like paradoxical. Uh, that's like the heart of Christianity is to, to 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 be true to yourself and to admit admit all of that right. and your own responsibility for everyone. Yeah, and it's it's ultimately um, you admit responsibility only because of love, right? I it seems that it's love which is the only thing that is credible. <laughs> As the, once said. the only thing the only thing that makes sense mm-hmm. out of well out of life right so the only yeah. way that you can understand life is is through love and therefore if you don't love 
you're not going to understand life. Same with, which, same, which, same which, with, with suffering, right? Suffering is only going to make sense right. if it's understood in love, which is going to be in a, in a com- compassionate sort of way, that you're going to have to suffer with with the others, um, which is why, which is I think ultimately why this this whole chapter on the rebellion is 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 like that's the heart of it, um, because Ivan, who doesn't love, right, and he even talks about before this when they become friends, yeah, he's ditching Katerina, and that's that's the greatest freedom that he's ever had. Now he doesn't have to worry about that. Yeah, um, but it 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 should be like destroying him. In some sense, but right. now he's like, I don't even have to love her, which she, she by her own like beauty and wonder, forced me to love her, right? Just by being who she was, he fell in love with her, right? But, but, so so if, if Ivan doesn't love, then of course he's not going to answer the question, right. and if Alyosha does love, he's not going to answer the question right. in the way that people look for answers, right. but he's going to, man, this sounds hippie. He's going to be the be the answer to the question. Of suffering, right? By suffering for the other, right? By by loving the other, um, and and I think Ivan kind of gets at this at the end of the brothers become friends chapter, brothers make friends chapter, um, where um, he says he doesn't accept the world. Um, he's, before he get, gets into why he doesn't accept the world, um, and he even says on, actually on the first page of the rebellion, right? This idea, Christ-like love for men is a miracle impossible on earth. Yeah. He was God. We are not gods. And, and 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 there's a dichotomy there too in the the Nestorian kind of dichotomy in the incarnation. Yeah. Jesus did what he did because he's God, not because he's man. And 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 to make that dichotomy is automatically to not misunderstand Jesus Christ. I think. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. But before that, before that, I mean that we could go deep into that too. But um, before that, he says he talks about stupidity, which is really interesting. Um, he concludes his long tirade with this. You didn't want to hear about God, but only to know what the brother you, lo- you love yeah. lives by. So he admits that he, that he loves, right? And why did you become as stupidly as you could, asked Alyosha, which he was talking about before. Or he says, this is just above that part I just read, actually. Alyosha, that's my creed. I'm in earnest in what I say. I began our talk as stupidly as I could on purpose, but I've led up to my confession, for that's all you want. But he says this, this paragraph on stupidity, which is interesting. To begin with, this is Ivan, for the sake of being Russian. Russian conversations on such subjects are always carried on inconceivably stupidly. And secondly, the stupider one is, the closer one is to reality. The stupider one is, the clearer one is. Stupidity is brief and artless, while intelligence wriggles and hides itself. Intelligence is a knave, but stupidity is honest and straightforward. I've led the conversation to my despair, and the more stupidly I've presented it, the better for me. That's that's really interesting. Yeah. And it's right after that that he says he wants to be healed by him and, and does that childlike smile. Yeah. But I think, you know, uh, I think it was Peter Craig that said, only only some, only some someone who's a complete ignoramus or someone who has a PhD would argue yeah. X, Y, or Z, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I think that that... That kind of gets to the heart of that. This this idea that this, if you become really, really, really think about things and and become wise in the world, lots of times you'll you'll make excuses or say stupid things about things that people know aren't really the answer to things. And it kind of goes back to sort of the apologetics. Think about the biggest atheists in this book. They're the divinity students. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. And 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 let's go back to. Uh, Father Zosima's meeting the pilgrims, right? Who who yeah. are the ones with faith? It's the peasant women mm-hmm. with faith, right? It's mm-hmm. Madame Holokoff who is con- contrasted with them, who has little faith, right? right? And it, so I, I think there's something about quote unquote stupidity, as he kind of talks about it, that actually is it it does not obscure one's ability to see reality for what it is, um, and that when you dive into the questions and, 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 and analyze and all that, then, then you, you risk um, basically making excuses for things and not looking at reality as it is. Yeah. And, and, but that's the beauty of Alyosha, right, um, is that he, he won't do that. Right? It's yeah. also the beauty of Ivan. Right. Ivan won't do that either. I mean, Ivan's a smart dude, right? He's, he's publishing articles on church and state. Um, but he will sit here and ask the question of children's suffering 
But it, but it's always in jest. Like all of his articles, all of his academic pursuits, he knows it's all a farce. And and um, so does Zosima. Zosima. Yeah. That's what I was going to point that out. Yeah. Um, it, this is in the in the Why is Such a Man Alive chapter when we're we we're just talking about this, right? It's on page seventy three, mm-hmm. going all the way back there. Um, Zosima says to him, he, this is right when Ivan says, there's no virtue, there's no immoral, immortality. You're blessed in believing that or else most unhappy. That's the beginning of Zosima's sort of commentary. Yeah. And this is where Ivan gets really excited, right? Perhaps you're right, but I wasn't altogether joking. And he says, you weren't, right? And, and you divert yourself with these magazine articles, but you don't really think these yeah, things, right? There is. And, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's, he says, you have an aching heart which mock at them inwardly, mock at your own arguments, right? That questions you have not answered, and it is your great grief, for it is clam, cl- cl- for it clamors for an answer. And then he says it can't be answered in the affirmative. Um, but thank God that you've given. Here it is again. Thank the Creator, who had who had given you a lofty heart capable of such suffering. And it's right then that he goes and kisses the elder. Um, kisses the elder's hand and receives his blessing yeah. um, which he didn't receive before so again there's this question of like being capable of suffering means that you can get to the heart of reality right. and that your heart your own heart which clamors for the answer to the problem of evil can only find it in yeah. suffering yeah. so yeah it's a related topic I don't it's beginning, yeah, yeah. beginning of four this conversation about John the Merciful yeah and you can, you know, beggars should actually request for alms by a newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> that way, that way, the alms givers don't have to see them. Right. Um, and, and so I was because thinking, because because as as what he said, Zosima has said that yeah. the person's face, yeah, yeah, yeah the Zosima, face of a man often yeah. hinders many people not practiced in love from loving him. Yeah, yeah, and and so I, I and then it's it's uh, this is all about incarnationality. Yeah. Right? So so Ivan Ivan says. Uh, right, at the, right at the beginning there. Um, I can never understand how one can love one's neighbors. It's just one's neighbors, to my mind, that one can't love. Right. Though one might love those at a distance. I once read somewhere, John the Merciful, and he gives a little story about John the Merciful. He says, I'm convinced that he did that, breathe into this putrid mouth, I, he did that from self-laceration from the self-laceration of falsity for the sake of the charity imposed by duty as a penance laid on him. For anyone to love a man, he must be hidden. For as soon as he shows his face, love is gone. I mean, this is this is richer, this is a richer sort of analysis of the dangers of, of charity than, than Nietzsche do but it's the same it's the same type of thing because what Mm -hmm. i think what he's saying is when you see someone who's in need of love like this and you love them it's either for your own like self aggrandizement like your your sort of praise of yourself um or it's it's out of like as as he puts it here you know incredibly laceration it's i'm going to use this person either to make myself great right or i'm going to use this person to make myself small because I know I'm a sinful person and yada yada but that's still a type of yeah you know although in a sort of a masochistic way a, a type of like greatness I'm going right. to diminish myself so that I can be great in the John the Baptist type of way right but it's still a type but w- whatever this the case may be too, yeah. yeah whatever the case may be it's this isn't love neither of these are love right, right? and so the, the 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 problem is how when you see the person how can you actually love them, right? Yeah. And, and uh, this is how he begins the rebellion chapter, that you can't love your neighbor. It's impossible to love. Love, it seems that what he's saying is he's framing the whole rebellion, all these stories of suffering from the, the vantage point of it's impossible to actually love your neighbor. Love is going to be something uh, of a different order. Right. It's, not, it's not its own order. Um, especially um, what what um, um, uh, Alyosha goes on to say, but but there is a great deal of Christ-like love. Um, he responds. Zosimus said something basically the exact same thing that you said, Ivan. But 
But there's a great deal in mankind, an almost Christ-like love. I know that myself, Ivan. So, so this is not a theory. I don't know Christ-like love as a theory. Right. I, I have experienced it myself. Um, and then what does Ivan say? I know nothing of it so far and yeah. can't understand it. Um, right. And nu- innumerable mass of mankind are with me here. So basically saying, I don't understand what Christ-like suffering is or can be uh, if it's not what I just said up here. That's right. the only thing that I can, the only way to make sense out of John the Merciful's actions. Um and so then, of course, when you see all this suffering, mm-hmm. you're going to be seeing it in a way that's not the Christ-like way. That is, you're not going to see it in the way that Christ saw suffering, mm-hmm. uh, which is to say through the eyes of, of, of love, um, and, 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 and not something apart from you, but something that you are, you know, in. Um, so I, I don't know, I thought that was a, a, a really significant preface to to rebellion. It's that, of course, you're going to have a rebellion if you don't see how it's possible to love your neighbor. Right. This is, this is going to be an absurd world if you cannot love your neighbor. Yeah. And, and, but I think that that's, you know, I still think, and, and he, and, and Alyosha admits it by saying, Father Zosma said the same thing. This is not an insight that he rejects. Oh, no, you don't understand, Ivan. No, he says, yeah, you're right. It's really hard to love the person in front of you because you know them Mm -hmm. and you know all the excuses that they make and you know all the times that they've they've chosen sin over over good, even to your own detriment. I mean, he doesn't say it this way, but I mean, I'm thinking about my own pain and loving those the face in yeah. front of me right yes um and there there they are asking you for something else and you're like you 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 twit who have done yeah. these things yeah. to me yeah. and other people and i've seen what you've done yeah. and you dare ask me yeah. to love you yeah you've, I mean, you've I, stepped on my foot and you smell funny yeah <laughs> yeah i thought that was a great a great way that he put put it there so it's yeah. it's 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 like when jesus tells you to love your enemy and he tells you to love your neighbor. I don't think those are exclusive, right? <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. Uh, commands. Yeah, uh, and I think this is what I've been saying. It's your neighbor who is by his very being your neighbor, your enemy. Yeah, because people people piss each other off. Yeah, because right? I mean, we're karamatsovs. Yeah, because we're all karamatsovs, right? Yeah, <laughs> As yeah co- he goes on. I mean, this is, this yeah, he so- says it here on page 264. Yeah. 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 Go, yeah. He yeah. says, uh, the innocent must not suffer for another sin. And I want to get back to that. And especially such innocence. He's talking about the children, right? May be surprising me, Alyosha, but I am awfully fond of children too. And observe cruel people and the violent, the rapacious, the karamatsovs are sometimes very fond of children. Children, while they're quite little, up to seven, and yet they're the ones who do the, the crimes, right? right? They're the ones who do this thing to them. Um, but, but, but this idea of the innocent not suffering for another's sins, you know, and we were talking about this before, right? How can I atone for, he, as, he, as he talked about at the end of this chapter, right? Their tears are unatoned for. They must be unatoned for. The, the mother cannot forgive right. the, 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 you know, the, the, the retired army officer who sends the boy out to get ripped up by the yeah. dogs. She dare not forgive. Mm-hmm. And I think there's something about solidarity that, that you were talking about before, right? If it's true that we take on everyone and that we're united in some way, even in yeah. sin, yeah. maybe maybe actually in sin, right? right? Which yeah. seems to be one of the yeah. questions of, of this yeah. book. Yeah. Just wait. Oh, you know, good. If you think we've seen sin up to this point, <laughs> it's all coming. Yeah. Um, but but this idea: the innocent must not suffer for another's sins, or even that I can't forgive another for their sin against a third party. Right. Is all based in 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 what we were talking about earlier in the semester or last semester? I guess it's over. Mm. <laughs> uh, the Schindlerian bourgeois metaphysics, right? His, yeah. Yeah. This idea that I am me, you are you, and that's it. Then, of course, I can't forgive you for another sin. Right. Um, I have, and I would have no right to. Right, right. Not, not only that, but if I dared did that, mm-hmm. it would be wrong of me. Yeah. 
Um, and so, so in a sense, the, the forgiveness of the mother for, for, the, for, the, for the murderer of her child is evil right. rather than the ultimate good. That's assuming there is not a solidarity, that when the mother forgives, it is, in a sense, the child forgiving, right? right. Um, and yet there's still this, this I mean, yeah. and as I say that, I have to admit, there's still this part of me that says... But there is something wrong yeah. with that. Yeah, and I think the only way... The, yeah, I think when you say it... I think this is Alyosha's point. When you say it, it doesn't make sense. It sounds stupid. You, you would reject it. And Alyosha seems to reject it when he says it. He but says it wouldn't he, consent. Yeah, but, wouldn't but he, consent wants, he wants to... He, he, it only makes sense in this mysterious manner when you yourself actually do it. Right. Right. So, like, the reason for why this, why this would be okay to do is when you actually do engage in this type of a forgiveness forgiveness yeah. and this type of suffering and and compassionate suffering that is you 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 undergo the the type of suffering that the other has done because you recognize that you are the one that's responsible for it and yeah. that you forgive and I, and, and, and there's something about forgiveness that's almost in some sense the ultimate suffering i mean to forgive someone for what they've done to you or to someone you love is like a greater suffering than maybe the suffering yep. that you endured and, at their hands. But but it's also yeah I think you're you're I think that's that's dead right. But it's also the um, the greatest. It has the potential potential to be the greatest cause of suffering of another because remember, um, um, Elusha when his when his his dad's like um, talking to him and, mm -hmm. and Elusha says, "Oh, when I grow up, I'm going to become one of those really rich captains who says." Uh, I'm gonna go study, get really rich, come back, and then I'm gonna like take my sword and kill all these people. Yeah. He says, but that's a sin, my boy. You can't yeah. do that. He says, okay, well, I'll I'll go get rich, come back, point my sword to their throat, and say, I could kill you, but I forgive you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and that'll really get him. <laughs> yeah. That, and that's gonna even be worse. Is yeah. that I'm gonna be able to like, you know, get get to the point of being able to kill them, and then not. Right. That's right. A, that's that's a. It's still a type of murder and, 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 right. and maybe in a sense it's even a worse type of right. degradation of humanity that it, you use forgiveness yeah as a weapon as the exact opposite of it right? yeah and and it's it's that elusha point is is the is the idea i am better than you yeah and this is why i can do this whereas alios is continually has said throughout this book it's because i'm not better than that person yeah that I can that that I do yeah, this right right I right. recognize that they're actually better than like like the the, the drunk captain, uh, it, who you know, beats his beats his wife and his kids yeah, is yeah. better than Alyosha because he said I, I mean Alyosha probably I, I would have killed them by now if yeah, I was him you know yeah. if I was in his situation yeah and I think it's important that I mean maybe it's what's the main plot here here's one of the interesting questions. What's the main plot? The inner or the outer plot? Well, <laughs> what's the main? What's the main outer plot? <laughs> um, I mean, it, it seems that it's the the Ivan and Alyosha and Dimitri and Fyodor and, and this whole thing. But you kind of get this other plot that's that's taking place on the side with with Ilusha and the. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we haven't seen a lot of it yet, but a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Alyosha wants to befriend this boy. Yeah. Right. Um, and and I think. There's something really significant about that because it seems to be, um, it seems to be exactly what um, uh, would go counter to this rebellion chapter. Mm -hmm. He's trying to take on the the, the suffering of that that um, that whole family, really. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. I mean, and he even literally took it on by by having. Stone's thrown at him. Yeah, <laughs> and his finger bit. And his finger <laughs> to the <Yeah>. bone. <laughs> yeah, and and I think um, you know the setup of uh, you know and, and, and maybe I don't know if we're, we're at we're getting close to time. Maybe we can unless you had something else you wanted to talk about. No, no, no. Uh, maybe we can end here. Uh, the setup for the Grand Inquisitor is um, after he says, "I don't accept. I give back my entrance ticket." Um, would you consent to this, Alyosha? He says, "No, I would not consent." Um, would you admit that it's worth it? No, I can't admit it, brother. Alyosha suddenly, with flashing eyes, 
said suddenly with flashing eyes. You said just now that there is, is there, this is page 273, is there a being in the whole world who would have the right to forgive and could forgive? But there is a being and he can forgive everything, all and for all, because he gave his innocent blood for all and everything. You have forgotten him and on him is built the edifice and it is to him they cry aloud. Thou art just, O Lord, for thy ways are revealed. So Alyosha, his ultimate answer to this is, is and, and I think this is, this is not the kind of answer that Ivan's looking for. He wants a, uh, an explanation where, you know, the, the, the statistical scales have been balanced in some mm-hmm. sense, right? Uh, okay, so this evil, this, this horrible thing happened to this totally innocent child. How are you going to balance that out? What are you going to do? Um, and Alyosha's answer is just pointing to Christ. Um, and so it's not that, that Christ balances it out in some sense. It's, it's in some sense that Christ is the meaning of all reality and that he is, he is the answer in an un, like a non-answer way. Like it's, it's, not, it's not ask question, get answer, but it's, maybe a surprising re-asking of the question, something like that. I mean, he doesn't put it quite like that, but this is kind of how I'm thinking of, of what's going on here. Because he says, I, I wouldn't consent. I wouldn't admit to this. I would not I would give back my entrance ticket too. Yeah. But then there's Jesus, right? And, and it's, yeah. it's this sort of, it's this sort of answer to the problem that doesn't come as an answer in the way that I was expecting yeah. an answer. And yet he's already thought of this. I, Hence the Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, because I've said, "Oh no, 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 no!" That's precisely him that that I that I haven't forgotten. Right. right? I, uh, he's like, "I'm surprised you haven't brought him up yet." Yeah, <laughs> Usually you do all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so I, I, I think it it's important that he, so Ivan's approaching. I mean, this this is I think a really important theme throughout the whole book, and we've seen it many times. He's approaching the question from the outside mm-hmm. um, and he's approaching Christ and the innocence of his blood and his sacrifice um, and his love from the outside which is going to to be it's going to prevent him from actually understanding what right. that is yeah so um, but but that leads you to say how do I not approach him from the outside how do I how do I know Christ not externally as this idea but how do I know him personally? And um, if you can't, if you can't do that, if you can't make the the transition from knowing him externally to internally or personally, then I think th- what you say about what the the Grand Inquisitor's view of Christianity, I think, is going to be your view of Christianity, although not stated so starkly. Right. There's a lot at stake in being able to know and see Christianity from the inside Um, and what's at stake is the Grand Inquisitor's view of Christianity would serve you just as well right Right. and and, and, because ultimately it's saying all right Jesus give me the answer to my question as I expect it yeah and then you can you can drop off or not if you I don't care because you've given me the answer right Um, but you're just like the, the, the means to this great answer and it's the silence of Christ yeah that uh in the Grand Inquisitor chapter which we're already kind of getting into here um that and in the science of Christ, in his own stinking trials, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. that is the answer to the questions that are being asked. Right. right. And so, right. Uh, you and know, if you, and if you approach that from the outside, then those those are actually non non answers. Yeah, they're they're, right. they're insufficient. Yep. Right. And yeah. and and so this is the key, right? That that you have to enter into, and again, going back to Zosima, thank the Creator who's given you a heart that can suffer. So. Yeah. Right to enter into that in a way is to understand. I'm putting it in quotes. Yeah. People can't say it. <laughs> yeah. Understand, uh-huh. understand the problem of evil, right. or understand the suffering of children. Um, but you know, there's there's the mysteriousness of it is still there, right? And and, and you can't just you're never going to get a satisfactory answer in an Ivan way. You're always going to have to get an answer in a Christ silence being way. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that yeah. means. Yeah. Well, we didn't we didn't say anything about the guitar. Smear the smear the guitar.
Yeah, but that's okay. I, we also didn't say this, this. There's a great line on 256 about Europe being a graveyard, but a most precious graveyard. When I read that, I was like, that is exactly how I and, thought of it when I was there. And look at so just I will, we can maybe end with this. This is part of the song. That's a Spanish word called song that he's singing. Um, oh, we forgot about love and logic too, but. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> oh well. So two so 251. Whatever you may say, I shall go far away. Life will be bright and gay in the city far away. I shall not grieve. I shall not grieve at all. I don't intend to grieve at all. <laughs> Very interesting in light of uh, what's to what's to come in the next chapter, uh, the next two chapter, uh, yeah, next two chapters. Um, so kind of through throughout that, you get this this um, interesting uh, song about you know escaping right and it's and that's exactly what Elios is not doing right and and ultimately that doesn't really bring gaiety yeah um and and i even struggling with this i mean he doesn't want to escape re- although he says he does i think he's trying to like avoid the escape of reality mm-hmm. but um Smirnikov seems to just be fully He's, he's maybe more of a Karamazov than the Karamazovs. <laughs> well, well, he is a Karamazov. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I, you know, I, I, I think there's a theme in here, too, of, of monasticism and stability. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's instability that one actually finds happiness, yeah. which is going to, which, of course, but stability means staring your neighbor in the face and loving them. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so all the themes are kind of coming out here. And Zosima's answer, which is, Staying where he's at, yeah. right? Uh, going yeah. back to the ancient monastics who say, "Your cell is your salvation." Right? Yeah. Stay where you are. That's yeah. the place. That's the place of of, of ultimate, yeah. you know, uh, satisfaction and happiness. Because you have a neighbor. Yeah, and because uh, if you don't, yeah, if you and, and and I mean, there's a lot of themes on on sort of the, the world today and 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 the mobility of the world today and people moving all around, including my own life, which I've moved all over the place, um, and why that's really inhuman in many ways so yeah so won't you be my neighbor 